John 13, I'm not preaching this. The, the, Lord, the Lord reminded me of what, what we have already learned. What we have already learned. And he showed me I need to remind you of this. And I thank God because of the, the messages, the prophetic words. Because they are going in line. Right? Now I understand why the Lord reminded me of this. Amen. John 13, we read from verse 1 to 17. So I'll just point the things that the Lord reminded me about. And because you already know it, I already talked about it, I don't have to preach it again. <clears throat> so he says, John 13 from verse 1, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his, that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. You know, that verse is very interesting. The devil having put it in Judas' heart. The devil. And that was one of the apostles. Soon I'm going to preach about Judas. Among the twelve, imagine. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and guarded himself. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was guarded. Then cometh to he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I wash not, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. You have no, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hand on my head. You know, Peter was interested. He's saying, you will never wash me. But when he was told, if I don't wash you, that's your, that's your end with me. You are not part of me. You are not even part of my church. When Peter heard that, he said, don't just wash my feet. Utter my head. That's a wash akila mahal. You know? <laughs> Praise God. Verse 10, Jesus said to him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all. That is Judas in that fellowship. They were clean, but Judas was not. He had a devil. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, said he, you are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? You call me master and lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your lord and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily I say unto you, you, are, you the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Praise God. Jesus washed the apostles' feet. Then he told them 
wash one another's feet. Now the key thing, with one key thing he says there, that he's washing their feet because they are clean already. These people are clean. But there is a problem with the feet. Feet tend to get dirty. I, on the way, as you walk, your feet will get dirty. Natural. And especially those days and what they were wearing and desert land, you can tell what will happen to the feet. That's why the culture of feet washing came up. Because getting into someone's house with those feet is not fitting. So he tells them, because it was a, a normal culture anyway, but when he does it, he brings a spiritual meaning to this thing. He tells them, as I have washed your feet, wash one another's feet, because feet tend to get dirty. And this is what the Lord had shown me some time back when I was teaching on this thing about feet washing. There's something very spiritual about feet washing. Amen. Because it shows me that all of us here, we are like feet. Each one of us here is a foot. <laughs> you are a foot, not feet. You are a foot. You are, as an individual, you are a foot in the house of God. Now, and this is connected, when I'm saying this, with what God has promised to do among us. There is a level and standard of righteousness and cleanliness that is expected of every believer if God is going to move in his life. There is a standard expected if God is going to move in a church. God has his own standard. There is a cleanliness that needs to exist in the house of God. Amen. But then also, we as a people from different backgrounds coming together, we have our differences and weaknesses and failures and problems and headaches <laughs> that we cause. But if God is going to move in our midst, there has to be unity. Amen. The Bible says, Behold how good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. It's like precious oil. Now, the flow of that oil, the oil is there. Amen. God has enough oil for the church. It is there. But it has to be activated for it to start flowing in a church. And what activates that oil is the unity of the brethren. Amen. When there is division, the flow of oil is cut. It cannot flow. Even if you pray fire and brimstone, the oil is activated by unity. The unity of saints. Amen. And if the devil is going to sabotage a church and sabotage the move of God in a church, he begins by breaking unity. He brings division. He attacks relationships. Praise God. We are together. That is where he goes. Because when he breaks unity or he attacks relationships, he has cut off the flow of the oil. The church is, ex is kept and maintained by the presence of the Holy Spirit and is moving in our midst. Now, if you cut off that, there is no church. You have given the devil an opportunity to be the head of the church. You know, we can be in a church like this and the real power behind the church is the devil. And he's feeling very good. So if God is going to move in our midst, there has to be unit. We have to work out unit. Amen. Now, there can be no unity unless we learn to wash each other's feet. Amen. 
One of the ways of encouraging that unity is you subject your feet not to the Lord to wash. Not to the Holy Ghost to wash. You must learn how to subject your feet to your brother and to your sister to wash. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, wash one another's feet. He did not say, bring your feet. I wash them for you. That is after he washed them. After he washed the 12 apostles, he told them from now and forth, go washing each other's feet in order to maintain the unity of the spirit and the cleanliness in the church. So we have to wash each other's feet. It's a responsibility. Amen. Oh, but on the other side, feet are different. There's no feet that looks like other. They are different. Amen. Maybe you have yours, two of them, they look the same. But my feet don't look like your feet. <laughs> and that's where a problem comes in. Your foot is not my foot. <laughs> so when I bring mine to you, it may not be pleasant to you to wash. No? But we, you know, both sides, the washer and the washi. <laughs> Both of you must come to a place of agreement and fellowship and submission for it to happen. Amen. Because you can bring me a foot that I have never seen. <laughs> Amen. And one, this is, the Lord reminding me of this, is in line with what he is doing in this church. The Lord is at work in this church, I tell you. He's very much at work in this church. But if he's going to work in our midst and fulfill what he's saying, we have to wash one another's feet. And you have to subject your feet for washing. If we are going to walk with God. Amen. So quickly, I know some of you may be having those notes, but let me mention them for those who have not been there. Number one is you have heavy feet. Kuna feet that are heavy. The feet that drain you. Now I'm not talking about your foot being heavy. I am talking about the foot brought to you. To wash. Are you getting? So I'm not talking about to you about your foot or your feet. I am talking to you about a foot that God will direct to you to wash. Now remember feet are dirty. They tend to be dirty. So some feet may be brought to you or for you to be brought a foot to wash. It means for you to know that the foot needs a washing, it has to offend you. <laughs> Are you getting it? It will offend you first. That's why the Bible says offenses must come. When you are together like this, kuna kugongana vichwa, sindio? In a fellowship like this one, kuna kugongana. Kuna quarreling. Kuna hurting each other. It happens. Now the issue is, when it happens to you, what do you do? Learn to wash that foot. So kuna heavy feet. Praise God. Now, heavy feet are those ones that make you tired. Have you ever talked to people who leave you drained? Unaongea na mutu unaisha. Unatoka hapo unasikia unataka maji ya kunyu. Because just talking to the person drained you. Unamuambia hivi, anakuambia hivi. Sema hivi, anasema hivi. Hii mugu inatakana yoshi, unasema ni yako mbaya si yangu. You know? Eh? Kama? Bush. I'm not getting. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Now, the heavy feet, these are people who don't respond to anything. They are not interested. They don't care. You talk to them, they make you feel wasted. <laughs> they shut you down. If you want to wash a heavy foot, by the way, most of the time, if you have ever done, if you have gone to a spa where they wash feet, eh? women do anafanyo ile mugu inafanyo mambo, eh? Hata wanaume wanafanyo hivyo, sindio? So unaweka mugu yako kwa karai, ikona maji. A heavy foot can easily knock down that thing and splash the water on your face. So washing this feet can easily stain you and make you angry. But you have to be careful to protect your heart while bringing healing to this person. Because he's a sick person. Praise God. And heavy feet tend to be more dirty than others. Because the kienda inaenda imefagia barabara. Sindio? Mwenye heavy feet anashindu waku kuinua. So they get more dirty. So a heavy foot is known as very arrogant and careless. <clears throat> and you don't correct them. And they don't want your help. They can help themselves. Difficult people. Yeah, they know it all. Difficult people. Hard. And they leave you exhausted. Very hard to deal with. But that kind of a foot is in this church today. Say amen. amen. And the Lord is not saying you drive it away. He is saying wash it. Amen. amen. Remembering that you also have a foot. Sindio. Number two, we have the wounded feet. Feet ikona vidonda. People come from different backgrounds. And we meet in a church like this. You don't know the past experiences of people. So most of them or some of them may have been wounded wherever they were. And they never got a healing. They only pushed it somewhere. So when you start talking to them smiling, they start measuring you. <laughs> Are you another one who is coming to, to hurt me? Because the wound is still there. It was not dealt with. Such people can easily annoy you and hurt you if you do not understand what they went through. So you can be talking to them very excited and all this, but they are looking at you suspiciously. And you, because of not knowing, you get angry. You start saying, oh, you need to, you're too proud. Hmm? Too proud. You see? So you hurt them more. <laughs> Those people need gentleness. Handle with care. Yeah. Handle with care. Yeah. Kata explode anytime. <laughs> Do you know people who have been wounded wanangojia to scratch that wound? And you can do that without knowing. In the washing, you scrub. You can scrub the wound. Praise God. So what we need to know is we need to pray for a discerning spirit. Now the Lord can help us. When we are dealing with people, we know who we are dealing with. So you may not be their problem, but wounded people will treat you as if you are the problem. But you are not the cause of that problem. Amen? Some of the problems with wounded people, and I'm not saying if you do this, you are, you are a wounded person, but most likely maybe you are. No. When, when we say the grace, ukopal, before we finish the grace, eh? Ukopal. By the time we are saying amen, you are out of the gate. 
you don't want people. You don't want to talk to people. Because you're always afraid they will hurt you again. So you tend to be suspicious of people. Hata mtu akikuangalia sana unaanza kusema mbona uniangalia anga hiyo? So it's very easy for such a person to bring a problem between the other, you know? And you judge them in a certain way that will break the relationship and unity. Some wounds are self-inflicted of course. Some are inflicted by other believers. But the thing is they are hurting and we need to know how to handle it. Amen. So if the church will experience unity, then we need to know how to handle people that are wounded or people that you cannot understand. You need to know how to to handle it in order to encourage the spirit of unity. Amen. But there's a, a warning along those lines. You may know what the problem is. You may know what that person's problem is. But ask yourself whether you're qualified to handle that problem. The fact that you're saved and spirit feel does not mean you can handle every problem. You can. Kuna some problems if you discover you need to refer. Amen. And therefore you will bring healing. You will have already done your part. If you refer that, you have done your washing. Amen. Because what we are seeking is not to be known as the problem solvers. What we are seeking is fellowship. Amen. And unity. Kuna ingine inaitwa touchy feet. Touchy. Feet that are touchy. You know, I don't know whether you know touchy people. Uh, being, being touchy there, there are people you can't touch literally I mean literally ukiguza mutu hivi anaruka ni sensitivity eh? kuna wengine ukiguza hapa hivi anapiga nduru hata kwa service hata kama tunasikiza mese umuguze by mistake hapa anapiga nduru <coughs> that kind of sensitivity now, these kind of people are the type you cannot joke around with. Just saying a joke. A joke too. Hmm? Man, you will fungu a jana. Eh? Eh? Masa nini? Na vita inatokea hapo because of a team that does not know you. You know? Ivo <laughs> too. Ama umwambia, but you, you are not smart today. Eh? Wendi wana nunulianga nguo? Eh? <laughs> Ivo tu. Very touchy. You can't say anything. Ivo tu. Kidogo maram. <laughs> they explode. And a small thing is magnified and made so big. And the next thing is they don't want to talk to each other. They don't want to greet each other. When they come to church, anaangalia huyo amekaa wapi anaenda pande hiyo ingine. Hata ukiworship una worship ukiangalia kona hivi ndio perhaps your eyes might see him na ulusa anointing. You know? So you make sure. <laughs> there are people who are like that. Somebody just spoke a word out of if it too. They didn't mean to hurt you. Lakini there was an explosion a touchy foot. If that concerns you, if you are a touchy person, one, you need to deal with yourself. Because not everyone is hurting you. Amen? But on the other side, if you are dealing with such a person, understand that that person needs healing. Amen? So that you can know how to walk with them step by step. If you don't do not do this kind of washing you bring you encourage division in the church the devil uses this to destroy unity in the house of god Amen Yeah wengine wanakosania tu hata kwa barabara lakini hiyo kukosana kwa barabara will be brought into the church 
And I don't know why it happens like that, by the way. Watu wanakosana Nairobi. But they will bring it. <laughs> so some of you, God is going to give you hard-touchy people to deal with. Because the Lord can also connect you. When we are in fellowship, God connects us with one another. Amen. So the Lord may connect you with a touchy person. Wash those feet. Amen. Na kuna wale slippery. Number four, slippery. I'm just going over them, not explaining. People who are very slippery. Very slippery. Una muona service leo? Next Sunday? Especially wakiwa rebuked kidogo? You don't see them. You fellowship now, but uh, when they realize you want to get a little bit deeper to know them, they disappear. They come one month later. People are very slippery. They don't even want to be known. They don't even want you to know their second name. My nani? Brother John. Ataki yo ingine. Ukiuliza yo ingine next Sunday umuoni. Akuji chachi. And some of these slippery people need the youth. <laughs> we have a youth that is so slippery. You don't see them. You wonder where they go. <laughs> Follow them up. Amen. That's how to deal with a uh, slippery foot. Follow them up. Send messages. You are watching. Amen. Make call. Visit them if you can. Because if you don't, the next time unasikia ako kwa Mwiro, hiyo siku ingine ako kwa Ezekiel, hiyo siku ingine ako kwa Nanga, hiyo siku ingine ako wapi. Yeah. And all he's looking for is ataki kujulikana. That's all. You don't want to be known. <laughs> Your foot is always covered. Toa viatu. Why do you think God told Moses to have you take off your shoes? Joshua was also told, take off your shoes. Because his of it is ingine zikitolewa, zikona mambo ingine. Anyway. Kuna feet ambayo ni sick, sick feet that have jiggers. Kuna feet that have jiggers. Zikona my infections, what do you do? Mingi. Zina wasumbua. Now by the way, all those things, insects, things like jiggers, all those things represent demons. So we have feet that have jiggers. That is people who are actually tormented by spirits. And we have them in church. Our part is to help them overcome the spirits that are ruling their lives. Amen. Of course, through the word of God, through correction, through rebuke. Now, it is tough to deal with a foot with jiggers because you are handling wounds. And now, if you are dealing with a foot with jiggers, you have to be careful because jiggers have a way of jumping into you. <laughs> if you are handling jiggers, most likely, if you are not careful, you will have jiggers. So kuna that thing called transference of spirits. When you come together with a person who has a spirit and you have not watched yourself carefully and covered yourself properly, you will be infected. But we have those feet. They need to be washed. Amen. Going on quickly. Ah, kuna feet that are smelling. You know what happens? I literally, kuna watu wakitawa viatu sahi. Utasikia, the atmosphere is changing. Sindio? Iko, kuna vya watu, hawezi toa vya watu saa hii. You know? Hawezi. Because mugu iko na, iko na arufu mbae. <laughs> Praise God. Now, those feet, the smelling foot, needs care in washing. 
Because as you wash them, they offend you. In the process of washing, they actually offend you. Kuna brother, let me give you an example of a smelling foot. Kuna brother who walked into a brother's house, another brother's house. Hapa dhika, simbal, hapa tu dhika. So you get into a brother's house. This brother who gets into somebody's house has no boundaries. You know people who don't have boundaries. You know. You, you have no boundaries that govern you. You think you can go anywhere, do anything to anyone because you are saved. And that's one problem that we have in church. That we tend to be without boundaries just because we are saved. So we assume you can do anything. So he walks into a brother's house and he goes to the bedroom. Evil to see when my brother. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know? And then he sees a coat hanged there. And it looked good. He took it. He tried it, put it on. And it fitted. He told the brother, in the name of Jesus, I possess this one. You know? <laughs> Imagine. That's a smelling foot. <laughs> now, the other thing, he found a brother who was on the other side of it. The opposite. The brother said, in the same name of Jesus, I command you, remove my suit. Take it back where you got it from. <laughs> People who have no boundaries. You need, by the way, tell your neighbor you need boundaries. You need. Yeah. Even if I'm your friend, you need boundaries. Boundaries must be put in place and must be respected. Amen. Amen. Don't come to me in tongues in the name of Jesus. Raba, 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 raba. No. Umeanza kushika vitu zangu na uja niuliza. You know? <laughs> you need boundaries. Amen. There are places. Hata kama tuko friends. You cannot come to my house and get into my bedroom. Nita kugonga. My friend. <laughs> You see? There must be boundaries. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, do you have boundaries? <laughs> do you know lack of boundaries is what has destroyed a lot of relationships? People are hurting. A church like this, there are people who are not talking to each other. Why? Because someone crossed what? Boundaries. Let me tell you, salvation did not remove boundaries. Salvation preserved the right boundaries that we need to have in our relationship with each other. There is a unity that we can only build if we learn boundaries. And without boundaries, we will break them. Are you with me? You are getting that? Yeah. Kila mutu atengeneze ni? And you need to respect someone's boundaries. Yes. Otherwise, you are smelling food. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. If you don't expect, uh, respect people's boundaries, mm -hmm. no. You will be a smelling food. Mm -hmm. You will offend people. Yes. You are making the house full of... Yes. Praise God. Are you with me there? Yes. Yeah. Learn that. If we are going to build unity in the church, yeah. we must respect. Yes. Mm -hmm. You just can't come and say, Mama, if you will give me a hand. But do you know there are people who do that? Kabisa. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Don't develop an ad, uh, the freedom of you want to hug everybody. Not everyone wants to be hugged. Yeah, yeah. 
there needs to be some level of relationship for you to be able to to ask somebody. Sio kila mtu tu hey hey No. Amen. We are together there. Smelling feet, the feet that have no boundaries. There are boundaries. Okay. You can expand that one further. There's a lot to say about that because of time we cannot do that now. Then we have hardened feet. Hardened feet, migungumu. Kuna watu wagumu dunia hii, my friend. <laughs> hardened difficult people. You don't even know what to do with them. What happens is most of them are not oiled. In the spirit they are not oiled. They are not oiled and you need that oil when you are dealing with them. Otherwise they will crush you. Praise God. And most of these hardened people don't respond to oil. Ushaona mtu tumeomba tumeingia kwa roho na ameka hivi tu. Statue ama anaangalia vile unafanya hivi anaangalia vile mwingine amefanya hivi amerudi tu hivi nothing where you are feeling the holy ghost is moving the guy is <laughs> tafen ebo angalia your neighbor and don't ask them don't ask them whether they are the ones but just look at them you will see on their faces you will see It is hard to wash those people. Do you know there are people you don't even know how to approach? God can give you a message for someone, but you look at him like this, una cancel. You you cancel that. <laughs> you cancel that. Praise God. If you want your brother to wash you, then you have to loosen up. Amen. You have to loosen up. You have to learn how to accommodate people, of course within boundaries, accommodate people so that someone can bring a word of encouragement. Another one a word of correction. Another one can rebuke you and not fear that you will punch them. You see? That's how we wash one another. We wash each other by bringing a word of encouragement, a word of rebuke, a word of correction and prayer. Amen. But you can present in such a way that even if the angel spoke to me. Unakumbuka I think there is someone in the Bible. Yeah. Was it Saul? God sending Samuel to Saul and Samuel saying God you know that guy. <laughs> you know. The Lord can send someone to you and the person and now God please send someone else. <laughs> send someone else. If you are hardened foot you need to deal with that. Amen. If you put all those feet together you find what Jesus meant by saying wash each others fit in a church like this one there will be offenses and people according to their feet they will respond differently to those i mean according to each person's uh feet the spirit of god would want to work with us and flow in our midst but we must have a system of dealing with wastes and dirt and filth yes. that is why in the gates of jerusalem if you go to the gates of jerusalem those all those gates had names there was one gate called the dung gate have you ever read about that one dung gate or refuse gate it was the gate through which 
<laughs> there, that was the place where the gate were dung, all the refuse and what was taken out of the city through. The church must have that system. Amen. Amen. Where we can remove uchaf dung because there's so much anyway. Because you walk, and every time if you walk from here to town, mostly you will come back with an offense. You need a worship. Amen? You go to Nairobi, you will come back with an offense. Some of you just have a tattoo from Makongeni to town. You have already been offended. You need a worship. The church must have a system of cleansing the filth and the dirt. Amen? So that the spirit can, can work through us and bring the nature of Jesus that the Lord wants us to develop. Amen. Now for that to happen, we have to learn how to submit to each other. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because without that submission, you will stay with your dung. <laughs> you will stay with your ugonjo, manin, the stubbornness and the demons and all these things. There must be that system in the house of God. And that's what the Lord is speaking to us about. If he is going to move in our midst, we must also know how to, to deal with this dung and chafu and things that grieve the Holy Spirit so that he can flow through us and bring healing to us. Amen. Praise God. Ah, I want us to stand on our feet and we are just going to take a minute or two I'm just telling the Holy Ghost to deal with us because it will not happen unless it begins with you. <laughs> uh, I watched something. Unajua to Meru. Meru was very interesting. If you are from Meru, say amen. If you are from Meru. <laughs> if you are from Meru, say amen. Unajua in Meru walianza kukata watu mikono hao watu wa mira Okay ukipatikana umeiba mira mkono inaenda So some reporters siji kama walikuwa wa KTN ama Nema Nation I can't remember they went there and they gathered a few young men there and they were asking them why do you people do this Why do you chop someone's hand off just because of mira and then one of them said, the president said, he said, the president said, security begins with you. <laughs> you see? So they were being told, if someone steals, why don't you take them to, if you arrest them, take them to the police. They said, the president told us, security. <laughs> so they start chopping people's hands off. And it's very easy in a church like this. You see someone with a problem, all you do is to chop them off your life. You cut them off. The Spirit of God cannot work with us like that. We have to submit to one another and correct one another and also be willing to confess to one another. Now that verse has come to my mind. Confess your fault to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Sindio. That's the worship that the Bible is talking about. Amen. Now that means also confession. If you are offended because of someone has offended you, then you go. Sindio. That's what confession is about. Confession ni wewe unajua ule ni hatu kwa. Unajua wewe ule cross line. Uyu ule kuja kwangu bila boundary. No unajua kwangu kuna boundary. Such things, those are confessions that lead to prayer for one another. Amen. Si